Hi, I'm Phil Hill. Welcome to eLiterate TV's series on personalized learning. In the last episode, we heard about the degree completion challenges at Essex County College and how they're trying a new pedagogical approach called self-regulated learning and the use of personalized learning software from McGraw-Hill called Alex. In this episode, we'll talk to teachers and students who are trying out this new approach. While the project is in its early stages and not without its own set of challenges, the majority of faculty and students that we talked to saw how this new approach enables faculty to help a diverse set of students work through their learning challenges in a way that a traditional course could not provide. Well, I've taught elementary algebra during the day and I've also taught it in the evening and the population can be very, very diverse. So when I taught it in the evening, I had a mixture of, you know, students who are coming back to school after a gap of perhaps 10 years. Uh, they were in their 50s. Um, you had every, you know, different kind of age range and, um, you know, math background. Sure. So you have the 18 year olds who are fresh from high school and then you've got people who've, for whatever personal reasons, had to take some time off and are coming back after, you know, a long gap. So, and the same is true for the day. The day tends to be a little bit more people in their, you know, um, late teens, 20s, 30s. Um, but again, the, the, the math background differs. So you've got people who are, you know, continuing after high school and then you've got people coming back after a gap. And then you also have a mixture of um, the types of students in terms of their responsibilities. So you've got students with, you know, children who have to miss classes sometimes because a child is sick or a day off or something like that. You've got people who come from full-time jobs, so they're coming late sometimes, things like that. And then you've got the, tip, you know, the typical college student who is just working on their studies. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of our incoming students um, require some developmental courses in math unfortunately. Um, I've found that, yes, the different students can play out differently in the redesign model. Um, some students do not have access to a computer outside of school, sometimes for economic reasons, sometimes because they're living in a halfway house. Mm -hmm. It's got to be quite a challenge. So, that that's something that is an instructor you have to keep in mind. Some students do not have computer access. When I was teaching the traditional method, I'll have students coming in and they didn't know how to multiply, they didn't know how to add and subtract. Rarely would those students be able to stay throughout the semester because after the thir third, no, even after the second week, everyone else is already in division, they're still stuck. And the teacher can't stop the class and say, okay, let's continue with multiplication because you have a syllabus to stick to. You have to continue teaching. And so those students will be frustrated and so they drop the class. At the same time, you had students who, you know, the first couple of weeks they'll be extremely bored because they already know all of that. And so unfortunately what would happen is eventually you would get to a point in, in the content that they don't know that. But because they have been zoning out for weeks, you know, they don't get that, okay, now I actually have to start paying attention. And so, yes, they should have been able to do that, but they still are not very successful because, you know, they were used to not paying attention. In contrast, the experience of the new personalized learning math courses at the college are significantly different for the faculty as well as the students. In the new model, the students work self-paced in the computer lab with the teacher acting as a floating coach. Separate classes are held every week in which the teacher helps the students review their own progress, evaluate their learning strategies for the previous week, and plan their strategies for the next week. Traditionally, I was in charge of the class. I determined what content I was going mm -hmm. to teach today. But when I walk into the lab, even if I know the students that I'm looking for and what problems they may have, I may just be teaching a different kind of content that day. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching addition, I'm teaching multiplication, I'm teaching fraction, I'm teaching graphing, I'm teaching on a one-to-one -one need as per the student. So my role is no longer, 
I'm no longer in control, actually. Mm. The students are. Yeah, I walk into my classroom already knowing mm -hmm. who my students are, where they are, and what skills they're going to need today. So perhaps in looking at my dashboard last night or my data, I may have seen that student A needs help with fractions. Mm -hmm. So I do know that today, this is where I'm going to begin my day. And from that, I walk, I move around the lab, look at what they're doing. When that red shows up on the screen, I know a student is in trouble. Mm -hmm. So I move over. Some days I look at just coaching because the student may just be having a very, very bad day. And it's not academic, it's non-academic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I have to be there as a coach and as a support and remind him that the purpose here, life happens, but the purpose here is about getting that work done, getting the math done. Mm -hmm. From that class, I'm observing because I am the facilitator of the class. I'm no longer the instructor or the professor. I mm -hmm. facilitate each and every student's learning. Mm -hmm. And so, I may pick up on a student not using the right strategies. And so in the second portion of the class, which is what we call our SRL, okay. our self-regulated learning class, where we coach our students, that becomes the center of the work that I wanted to do. Most of the students we talk to seem to have internalized the lessons of self-regulated learning and feel empowered to learn. It's pretty good because like, for example, say I'm doing a topic and I'm slower and Vivian's faster than I am. Mm -hmm. I could work by my own pace and then it's a professor there that I could raise my hand, excuse me, I don't understand this, could you help me with it? Because everybody learns at their own pace. Um, yeah, we are typically just sitting down on the computer screen, but we're sitting next to our um, classmates, so if there's a problem on it, I could ask my classmate. Like, that's, the, that's actually the best thing about Alex, is that there's an explain button right there. Like, as many times as you want, you can hit it. You can ask a friend, you could call the professor, you could ask the um, sub-professor, you could even watch a video. Like, it's whatever you want. <laughs> if you don't get it at that point, then it's, it's your fault. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> The new approach does place new demands on the faculty. For me, I would say to my colleague, this is hard work. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot, again, sit back and think that it's going to happen by itself. Your job is to ensure that you speak to each student every day. Mm -hmm. And when they leave, launch them for the next day or the next class. Your job is to observe that data, look at it closely, and be proactive in what's going to happen to that student next. Because you can almost always tell from the data and mm -hmm. student behavior, if you're observing students, what's going to happen next. So I would say this is hard work. Um, it's not as easy as it seems because it's the computer, mm -hmm. because the human element is almost always important mm -hmm. in the classroom. And l look at this as a tool to teach. You know, don't think, you know, this is going to do my job for me because it isn't. You know, the students still need you and it's just a tool that you need to learn how to use properly. My um, advice would be don't become passive because I think that's, that's the biggest um, pitfall. You know, you, you sit back and, and wait for students to ask you questions. and that's not going to be helpful and it's, you're not going to have success that way. You, know, you have to take an active approach. You know, go up to the students beforehand, know which students are having trouble and, and for example you could just t um, tell them, um, you know, I, I noticed that last one hour and a half or last class you tried mastering four topics, you know, you tried learning four topics. Of those four topics you were only able to master one. You know, is it that they were too challenging, or maybe you weren't paying it focusing, you were being distracted, what's happening? And, you know, try and identify as soon as possible what their problems are and what skills they need to be successful. Um, if you don't take that approach, then it would be, e it's very easy for the class to be um, railroaded because the student will say, well, I'm all on my own, you know, I, I could just stay home. I don't need to come to class. And they could think it's an impersonal approach to learning. But when the instructor is there helping them and knowing what they need to do, then they're more successful. Even so, the program is not a silver bullet. For one thing, it doesn't work well for every student. 
Alex itself, it's I think it's good, but as in my personal opinion, yes. I don't really like the way it's set up. I'd prefer to be in a classroom, hands on, actually someone there. So yeah. yeah. So so let's talk about that just a little bit. Um, from the typical classroom experience, a typical lecture type of classroom with someone there. What does that do for you, like as far as uh, helping you learn? What's the, how does that help you out? Um, I could actually sit and speak with someone, um, as in like assistant wise and being in classroom. Example for like Alex, it's like I sit there, it's more like a self type of thing. Mm -hmm. Everything is based on you and in the classroom everyone like it has to be done there and now mm -hmm. so and so sort of working within the group where the group all needs to progress together yeah. is something that you need is, yeah is what i believe as in if it's just based upon myself like i could procrastinate i could do it i could not do it as in the classroom mm -hmm. you know it has to be done does this mean that you're not making as much progress in the class yeah. as you feel you could in a different format? I'm making progress, but I feel as if like if I was to be in a classroom, it would be better. Mm -hmm. I make progress on Alex, but it's like at a slow pace. Well, I would just say to really commit yourself to I mean this program because since it's a very helpful, I mean, in my perspective, it's a very helpful program. But if you don't put in the time and you don't commit to it, you're going to end up in December when the semester's over, you know, halfway, only halfway through your course. So that, was, that would be my biggest advice, to really commit and, you know, push yourself. Some faculty also worry that progress the students make at performing procedural math may mask a lack of progress in deeper learning. I think that they have some benefit mm -hmm. in certain situations. Um, my concern, so I, I think education nowadays, given the diverse you know, population of incoming students, requires basically a diverse type of class available. Mm -hmm. Now, does one fit for every type of student? No, I don't think so. So. Um, I don't think that adaptive learning is going to replace, you know, a teacher in the classroom. Um, I agree with Brooke in the sense that it can be, uh, it can be um, successful for a certain type of student. And I agree with the, the student who, you know, has learned the material before, but perhaps got placed into this class, uh, is a little bit weak in certain topics, just needs a refresher. I think for that type of student, it's ideal because for that type of student sitting in the whole class all over again when you're teaching it as if you're learning it for the first time can be tedious, can be boring, they can, you know, lose interest and so on. So I think for that type of student I definitely can see where that would be helpful. My concern is this, that technology can be very helpful in terms of even online homework, um, there's instructor videos, there's, you know, there's a lot of things that can help the student. but. I don't think it can ever replace an actual discussion of the concepts. So if your goal is just to pass a class, then adaptive learning may be great because you can get through the class. But my concern, after, you know, teaching developmental class and then the, the next level developmental class and then the classes that move on up, and I've taught every class moving on up, you know, up through, you know, calculus, my concern isn't just that they can pass the class. My concern is can they apply what they learned? And I think that's the question that we as educators really have to ask. Is it just about getting passing rates? You know? um, is it just about getting through the material? You know, getting through the modules or, or whatever? So I think that's my biggest concern. And this has been you know, um, reappearing semester after semester and I happen to be teaching you know the elementary algebra class now and I have gotten one of my lowest passing rates ever yeah. is are they getting that you know that opportunity to really make sense out of the concepts because sure. there's a difference between you work on a problem and someone talks you through it even if they explain it very clearly and well but how do you make sense out of that with respect to all of algebra how do you make sense out of it you know within the broader broader um, you know, category of mathematics. I think math needs to make sense. The students who are plotting through, who are basically learning it by rote, they're the ones who aren't really learning. 
I mean, I would just say that, I, I mean, I agree with what, something that Brooke said earlier, is that there's no magic formula. I mean, mathematics is a really important topic. In an algebra course, you're learning analytical skills that you're going to apply to when you're a project manager. You're going to apply to any kind of task that you do, you know what I mean, in, in many other fields. So there, there has to, you know, there isn't this, like, trick to getting through it, you know, just quickly or easily or whatever. Um, so I feel like we have to be open to a variety of different solutions and recognize that there, it's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So even in the classroom when, you know, I have such a diverse student population, I got asked that same question before. Well, how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. The way I respond to one student can be very different than the way I respond to another student, even though it's in the same class and we're on the same material. There's one student that needs to be challenged and one student that if I push too hard, they're never going to come back. You know, and you have to kind of sense those kinds of things. You need to get to know the students. Um, and you need to kind of cater it to their, you know, their needs a little bit. I definitely agree with what Iman said, that you need um, different options. But providing multiple pathways can be challenging just at a logistical level. Right. Um, things like training faculty, making sure that students wind up in the model that's best for them. Are your advisors on board with it? Do your advisors know what's going on? Can they explain it to students? Um, how about scheduling? Do you have the technology up and running? Mm -hmm. It's Yeah, and yeah. advisement is key. Advisement, oh, yes. proper okay. advisement is key. Personalized learning tends to be marketed as a product, but what we see at Essex County College is that it can be better understood as a new pedagogical approach supported by the appropriate use of technology. In this case, students experience self-regulated learning to improve their metacognitive skills, to feel more comfortable asking for help, and to learn at a pace that is more appropriate for them than for the entire class. We'll be interested to learn more about the results of this program as it unfolds over the coming years.